Welcome back. I'm Tedward, and today, thanks to Ace Performance in Tewksbury, Massachusetts, we're driving the Ariel Atom 4. This thing is absolutely violent and crazy, and I could not be happier. It's powered by the Honda Civic Type R four-cylinder turbo, which in this car makes 350 horsepower with the additional performance package that this car does have, which includes a limited slip differential. It is all new ground up from the three. So this chassis, everything is completely new, including the suspension, everything in the car. The only thing that is shared with this car and the Ariel Atom 3 is the fuel cap, the brake pedal, and the clutch pedal. So this is definitely a ground up. Now I've never driven the Ariel Atom 3, but I've been told the 3 has a bit of an understeering problem and that this one balances out quite nicely. Inside, it is very simple. We've got some buckets. We've got the optional, I believe optional windscreen, thankfully, because this is gonna make my job a heck of a lot easier keeping my hat cam on. And we've also got the side panels on, which does a good job of keeping the wind away from me and uh, I guess our stuff inside the car. I'm trying to tie it up so I don't break cameras. But look, this is as raw and visceral as it gets. 1,350 pounds, 350 horsepower. Look, I know, I know 350 horsepower doesn't sound like a lot. It's violent. The entire drivetrain is Civic Type R. So if you're used to that, it's very familiar. It's just that I've never felt it in such a light car. I love this thing because everything is exposed. It's very easy to see what's going on. And for somebody like me, who always hears noises in my car and wants to check things, are these bushings good? Can I see the brake pads? All of that kind of stuff, completely exposed in the car. And it makes life a heck of a lot easier if you're a DIY guy. We've got Toyo R888 Rs. We have staggered 16 inch up front, 17 in the rear, 195 section tires up front, and 255 to try to keep this thing planted under power. Everything back here is exposed. So we can see our gearbox, all of our accessories, like our alternator up there. The turbo sat way up there and you hear it constantly because this is your intake. Now the standard Honda Civic Type R has had its share of problems on racetracks, primarily with cooling. It's a phenomenal car, but it's hard to get more than a couple laps out of it. And you gotta go to extenuating circumstances with hood venting, new inner cooler, radiators, all that stuff to keep them running. But this, obviously, this engine is completely exposed, helping it cool itself down. We've got a radiator up front and we've got this really trick inner cooler right down here, which is actually taking air and scooping it up from the underside to help keep those intake temperatures down. A few things I am thankful for on this car. Number one, these little fenders. That is incredibly helpful because I do not like getting rocks spat up or water into my face while I'm driving a car like this. And this beautiful tall roll bar gives me a sense of security because not much else gives you a sense of security in this thing. I don't wanna crash it. It's not gonna be pretty. So let's start it up. Let me show you what it's like to drive this car. And we're gonna attempt to keep the audio stable because I'm telling you, this is one of the loudest vehicles I've ever filmed. To get in, you kind of just have to stand on the seat and work your way into the vehicle. You don't want to use any force on this windscreen because it's not there for much more than air. I've got the aerial key fob in my pocket, which will allow me to start this with the button. So first we're going to go ignition. Here, our fuel pump, we can watch our beautiful color display come up. That's new for the Ariel 4. And then we just hold our start button. So here in our center stack, we have our traction control. So we're on level five right now. You can turn it down or up, depending on how crazy you want the vehicle to behave. And then we've got our boost function. So down here on setting one, that's gonna give us about 240, 260 horsepower. On two and three, it's giving you the full 350, but it's all about how it's delivering that boost. So three is more aggressive, two is a little more subtle, but subtle is never a word to be used for this vehicle. We've also got an aim solo here that if you're on the racetrack, you'll be able to get all of your data and stuff. Really no need for that today. It wants to reformat my card, not really into it. So it does have directionals, so we can turn our blinkers on left and right, right here. They are not self-canceling, so you gotta be aware of that. I'll probably be guilty of leaving them on at some point today. Fuel gauge, we've got 100%, we're ready to party. This is easily the trickiest audio I've ever had to record, so wish me luck. Oh 
Wow. Guys, power to weight ratio is no joke. This is crazy. This is just crazy. I'm in third gear, okay? 3,200 RPM, just lean into it. The sound coming from this intake is just out of this world. direct everything is we've got we've got a great communication between shifter throttle and clutch it's very easy to just jump in rev match it get everything dialed in the way you want it what's funny though is it still has it still retains this this Honda shifter so you could probably improve upon that with something like an acuity shifter It took me about an hour to get to the point where I could actually have a conversation with the camera. Sorry I'm yelling, I, I have to yell in this car. Because people just kept coming up to me and asking me about it. And I had to have like long conversations. I try to be nice to everybody. I don't want to turn people away, especially when it's about cars. I like talking about cars. This might be the most fun I've ever had. Isn't that nuts how much torque that is? It, it sends that rear end out. This is crazy. Wow. If you're wondering, this or Caterham 7, I mean, this is just a whole nother planet. I love a Caterham, and I think the Caterham is probably a more practical ownership experience just because you could actually row through a few gears on a public road in a 1600 Ford Kent Crossflow engine. I don't know that you can do that in this thing. This is too fast. This is next level stuff. Absolutely crazy. And you can just turn it on and shut it down in a heartbeat because it's so light. Oh, this is good. Chris Harris described this as like a midlife crisis car. I mean, he's not wrong. It's wildly impractical. It handles great. And it's fun on a track, I'm sure. But it's super loud. It doesn't do anything but scare the shit out of you. But that's okay. I kind of like that once in a while. And for like 100000 or I think it starts around $75,000, what else are you going to do? Oh, I've even got aerial labeled mirrors. How great is that? change the front and rear bias on the fly. I'm not going to be doing that. Oh my goodness. This is just unbelievable. On my screen, I've got a tachometer. It's basically useless to me, even though it's quite legible. Just things happen so fast. So I do have shift lights. The shift lights are glorious because that really gives me an idea. The other nice thing is because it's a Honda engine, we know we're reliable. We know we can just send it to the moon over and over and over again, and it'll be just fine. Let's see how this does on a little acceleration.
Driving through town, nothing to see, everything's cool. <laughs> it's not it's not subtle by any means. We are we are out here for sure. We're gonna make sure we have room for the emergency crews to come through if something were to happen. Now the nice thing is too, I've got this nice fire suppression kit ahead of me. So if anything does really go wrong, I can pull the little pin out there and it'll you know cover the car in foam. <laughs> especially to the Patreon supporters for your donations each month to help keep this thing and this podcast alive. 
I, I am in absolute heaven. For the love of God, don't forget to respect the drive. And I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>